Atenção, emissoras da Rede Globo. It's the proud boast of Brazil's TV Globo that only the three North American networks are bigger than Globo. But none is as powerful. Globo's power is daily reinforced by its superb graphics and obsessive repetition of its identity on screen. Globo e você, tudo a ver. Próxima terça nobre estreia, Superstar. 87-year-old Roberto Marinho is the owner of the Globo television network. His business card says he's a journalist. Tanto que costumamos dizer que ele é uma espécie de Stalin das comunicações em nosso país. Quem não concorda com ele, ele manda para a Sibéria. A Sibéria do gelo, a Sibéria do esquecimento. Eu acho que ele é mais poderoso que o cidadão Kane, inclusive. O cidadão Kane nunca imaginou que tivesse poder todo. O Roberto Marinho hoje é a força política mais importante no país de 150 milhões de habitantes. Nada se faz sem consultar o Dr. Roberto Marinho. É assustador. Globo awakens Brazil every morning with a cheerful children's show hosted by the intimate and flirtatious Xuxa. Olha, olha para mim e divida sua alegria, seu entusiasmo, a sua vontade de viver e vamos crer que uma vida melhor. Nós podemos, nós vamos conseguir. Nós não merecemos? Então, começando daqui, da nossa manhã, com o pé direito, soltando a praga, liberando tudo que tem direito. Um bom dia, bem gostoso nessa bochecha. Que Deus te proteja e que fique bem, bem pertinho de mim. Isso, assim que eu gosto. Chega mais. It's Xuxa and cartoons for five hours every morning from Monday through Saturday. In Sao Paulo, 80% of children and 54% of adults watch the show regularly. Since Xuxa's show began on Globo in 1986, the 28-year-old former model has become the queen of the little ones, a film star, and Latin America's top-selling singer. She ranks amongst the world's 40 highest-paid entertainers, just above Mel Gibson. Not everyone is happy in Brazil. Its economy is in the world's top 10, but its income distribution is the world's third worst. 60 million of its 150 million inhabitants live in abject poverty. The system is called savage capitalism. Brazil covers almost half of South America, and its people are a vast mix of races and nationalities. In 1500, the Indians saw the Portuguese discover Brazil. Then, Africans were imported as slaves. The 19th century saw the start of a massive wave of European immigration, and the 20th century brought the Japanese. In spite of the country's immense size, most Brazilians live near the coast, 75% of them in cities. The northeast is rural and poor. The urban dynamo of the country's economy is concentrated in the southeast, around the city of Sao Paulo. 50% of the country's land is owned by 1% of its people. The landless struggle to survive, as do the urban workers. Eu não como, né? Não. Só? Não. Só carrego. Só carrego. Com esse leite aí você vai aguentar até que horas? Até, um, até de noite, né? O que é que ele come? Arroz, legumes e carne moída e frango. Isso todos os dias? Do, duas vezes ao dia. More than a quarter of adult Brazilians can't read, and many more are semi-literate. Newspapers are expensive, none is national. Television, on the other hand, reaches a national audience that can exceed 100 million. There are over 200 local TV stations. Apart from a handful of public educational channels, all are private and show programs from one of the four national networks.
Joao Saad's Banderantes concentrates on sport and is the smallest. Adolfo Bloch's Manchete and Silvio Santos's SBT compete for second place. But Roberto Mourinho's Globo network is number one in Brazil. TV Globo has some 15,000 employees, including about 500 actors and writers. This makes Globo almost the same size as the BBC. And when it comes to promoting itself abroad, Globo is frank about its dominance in Brazil. The Global Television Network, with five stations and 63 affiliates, covers 99.2% of all Brazilian territory, reaching 99.9% .9 of the country's TV sets. Over the last five years, Global's ratings have been of 78%. We produce 95% of our primetime programming and get 75% of Brazil's TV media publicity budget. Vocês assistem a televisão todo dia? Todos os dias. Que, que tipo de programas vocês gostam de assistir? Novela, jornal, filme, chicanísio. E futebol, né? Futebol, principalmente futebol. Né? Fantástico. Vocês assistem mais o Globo do que qualquer outro programa? Só, é, é, é... Só o Globo. Since the early 70s, TV Globo has been flaunting its supremacy with an end-of-year song sung by the network stars. This one was for Globo's 25th birthday. I think the people who make the television. It's the head of the people who make the television. The television in Brazil is a reflection of the people, of what the people think and want. Because it's a television commercial. E sendo comercial, ela precisa ter primeiro lugar, precisa ter rating no Ibope, né? Ibope was Brazil's first TV ratings company. Today, a high Ibope has become a synonym for success. A show with low Ibope is terminated. Oferecimento Chocolates Nestlé. In the US, TV advertising takes about 20% of the national advertising cake. In Brazil, it takes more than 50%, $2 billion in 1990. Of that, over 70% went to Globo, since its ratings were by far the highest. The high investment in TV advertising often produces high-quality commercials. This jeans ad recently won first prize at Cannes. Starupia resistente. E tem caimento perfeito. Starup passa pelo mais rigoroso controle de qualidade. E dá total liberdade aos seus movimentos. Starup, o mais testado. O mais procurado. Se não for estar up, proteste. Eu acho que isso ocorre pelo seguinte: o Brasil é um, é um país de terceiro mundo, com exigências publicitárias totais de primeiro mundo. Então, muitas e muitas vezes, a nossa publicidade chega a ser melhor que o nosso país. Quem fez uma história de sucesso tem um novo apoio para continuá-la. American Express Corporate, o cartão empresarial. Aí, Tom, a lancha está rápida. Rápido? Rápido mesmo é depositar na poupança imediata nacional. Faça como a Ayrton, invista no nacional. The big advertisers don't expect any unsympathetic news coverage from the network. Valid, only the world. Some advertising does acknowledge the everyday reality of the majority of Brazilians. Television is the only way to reach the broad public in Brazil, and so the Brazilian federal government, with its ministries and public companies, was the fourth largest advertiser in Brazil in 1990. But the government's advertisements sit uneasily beside those which promote a luxurious lifestyle beyond the means of most Brazilians. Mostra. Quem usa triunfo está usando tudo. 
Aniversário, lua de mel, bodas. Use a imaginação. Comemore as suas datas especiais de uma forma diferente. Reserve uma suíte champion. Relaxe e aproveite no champion. Most Brazilians consume only the images. About one third of them can afford the products and services advertised on television. A missão de 125 anos. E atestando a qualidade, consiga a assinatura original de Bacardi. Entendeu? Anota aí. Bacardi. Receita de prestígio. The law allows the networks to own just a handful of local stations themselves. The rest are independent and affiliate themselves to a network. To run a radio or TV station, the owner needed a concession from the federal government, or to be more precise, from the president of Brazil personally. O presidente da República, que tinha a exclusividade dessa concessão, destinou esses canais de rádio e TV aos seus amigos, aos seus correligionários, aos representantes dos seus grupos políticos nos estados, nos municípios. Isso sem qualquer tipo de critério. Não foi utilizado um critério social, né, de as instituições educacionais, absolutamente. O critério foi um só, o favorecimento político. If I were the president and if I had the power to give a license or a concession to anyone, I would never give them, give it to a, an enemy of mine. <laughs> Today, it's estimated that about two-thirds of Brazil's TV stations are controlled, directly or indirectly, by politicians. Não há nenhum impedimento a que o político seja dono da televisão. O que há, porque nós temos muito o regime do formalismo e do faz de conta, o que há é a proibição de que o político seja o diretor, mas não o dono. Note bem, eu posso ser deputado federal ou governador do estado, tenho a televisão e ponho lá ou meu filho, ou meu, partido, meu, meu, meu conto correligionário, ou meu empregado, como se fosse o diretor, mas eu próprio, não, sou, não sendo o diretor do ponto de vista formal, sou, em verdade, o controlador da empresa. De maneira que não existe na legislação brasileira um remédio eficaz para esta, esta digamos assim, deturpação, deformação do domínio dos meios de comunicação pelo político. The show is the oldest kind of Brazilian television program. Today, the televised Rio Carnival is its apotheosis. The incredible Chacrinha, who died recently, was Brazil's master show presenter. His anarchic character was too much for the military dictatorship in the 70s, TV Globo cancelled his show for 10 years. Globo e você, tudo a ver. On Sunday, Brazilian television is a battle of shows. On Globo, there are no soaps or news programs. Its afternoon entry is Big Faust's Big Sunday, a mix of songs, silly Olympics, and home video catastrophes. Essa é a George Foreman, ao Hollywood. Coitado. TV Globo's rating supremacy is occasionally threatened on Sundays by Silvio Santos's 12-hour long show on his own SBT network. Santos started with Globo but went out on his own in 1975. In the Gate of Hope segment of Santos's show, people come to ask for things. Some get them. Some do not. 
e um fultão. Isso. Só isso? Só isso. É isso que você é isso. quer? E, é. É um kimono e um fultão? Isso. Bem, eu não conheço, mas... <risos> Vamos abrir as portas da esperança! Santos became super rich with his happiness box scheme. Lured by fabulous extra prizes, the punters make regular payments, allowing them to acquire consumer goods from special shops. In the maelstrom of the Brazilian economy, few keep up their payments for long. Their loss is Santos's gain. Ah, essa é a segunda vez. Agora é que eu estou começando a entender. É a segunda vez, então, não, não foi possível localizar a sua mãe. Ah, não foi possível. Ok, então venham para o palco, né? Então vamos abrir as portas da esperança. In fact, Santos could have reunited mother and daughter straight after the first broadcast. But he held up the reunion just so that it could happen on his show. There was just one hitch. By that time, the woman's mother, already ill, had become so sick that she couldn't attend. Another daughter came in her place. If his party had not been disqualified on a technicality, Silvio Santos would have been a presidential candidate in 1989. Globo e você, tudo a ver. Globo's common view with its audience is displayed every Sunday in Fantastico. Since 1973, this show of shows, this show of life, fusing news, entertainment and false optimism, has been the keystone of Globo's Sunday evening schedule. This is a typical Sunday with Fantastico, a bizarre mixture of items that adds up to Globo's view of the world. Domingo no Fantástico. Disney World, a fabulosa indústria da diversão, visitada por mais de 20 milhões de crianças e adultos do mundo inteiro todo ano. A viúva porcina, cercada pelos fãs das ruas de Havana. Você vai acompanhar a visita de Regina Duarte a Cuba, onde a novela Rock Santeiro é o maior sucesso na história da televisão de lá. O bandido do carro vermelho, um criminoso sexual e assassino, caçado pela polícia de 40 cidades dos estados de São Paulo, Minas e Goiás. Ele já violentou mais de 60 mulheres e tem uma ficha policial com 3 metros de comprimento. Domingo, no Fantástico. Television in Latin America started in September 1950 with TV Tupi in Sao Paulo. Its first transmission started late, lasted an hour and was live. Then, at the end of the show, they realized they had to do it all again the following day. Since there were no TV sets in Brazil, some were imported and placed in the jockey club and around the city. Assis de Chateaubriand, then Brazil's leading newspaper tycoon, started TV Tupi against the advice of almost everyone. Tupi's output was aimed at the elite who could afford televisions. Esso Reporter, initially a radio program, was its main journalistic show. Tupi also brought the novella, the Latin American soap opera, from radio to television, with Your Life Belongs to Me. Juscelino Kubitschek was elected president in 1955. He promised to make Brazil grow 50 years in five. This policy brought Brazilian-made VW Beetles, urbanized the population, and introduced endemic inflation and crippling foreign debt. The symbol of the new Brazil was Brasilia, the new capital. In the middle of nowhere, in the middle of the country, it was officially inaugurated in 1960. TV Excelsior, owned by a rich coffee magnet and airline proprietor, started in Sao Paulo in 1960 and marked a new stage in the marketing of a television station in Brazil. 
Within two years, Excelsior had opened its Rio station, bought up the other station's stars, started daily novellas, and won a prize in Spain for its journalism. Tupi, still the biggest TV company, continued with its amateurish output and eccentric management. But it did, in 1964, show The Right to be Born, the first novella to capture a mass audience. It was sponsored by a cosmetics company and made by its advertising agency. Brazil's addiction to the novella had begun. In March 1964, against a background of social unrest, the populist president Joao Goulart announced some limited nationalizations and cautious agrarian reforms at a mass rally. The countdown to a military coup had begun. The right took to the streets. In Sao Paulo, half a million took part in the March of the Family with God for Liberty. A few days later in Rio, leftist sailors threatened mutiny. The coup began on the 31st of March. Hundreds were imprisoned, and among many others, three former presidents were stripped of all political rights. The deposed Goulart fled into exile. On the following day, the American ambassador reported to Washington that the so-called democratic revolution was 95% successful. Behind the coup was the Superior War School, the military's think tank. It was modeled on the American National War College and imbued with its Cold War anti-communism. But the Brazilian school, unlike its American counterpart, contained civilians, businessmen, technocrats, and politicians. Marshal Castelo Branco became president with powers to govern by decree. In 1965, multi-party democracy was officially ended, and a token two-party system was imposed. One of the dictatorship's first acts was to establish the National Information Service, the central nervous system of the authoritarian state. TV Globo went on air in Rio on the 26th of April 1965, little more than a year after the coup. Roberto Marinho was the station's owner. Marinho's father founded the Rio morning daily newspaper, The Globe, in 1925, but he died soon after. His sons inherited the paper. At the age of 26 in 1931, Roberto Marinho became the paper's director. In the 40s, he began Radio Globo. Marinho obtained his first TV concession in 1957 from President Kubitschek, whose government he supported, and his second from Joao Goulart, whose government he helped to depose. O Globo tinha uma posição de apoio aos governos revolucionários porque o doutor, o jornalista Roberto Marinho, apoiou a Revolução de Março de 1964 desde antes de ela eclodir. Ele foi revolucionário de primeira hora e continuou, portanto, como revolucionário, a apoiar uh, uh, os governos da Revolução. Although he calls himself a journalist, uh, Roberto Marinho is an entrepreneur, a cunning entrepreneur. That's one. Number two, I think that Roberto Marinho could be considered a realist. In 1962, Marinho signed an assistance contract for TV Globo with the North American Time Life Company. Time Life did have some interests in minority interests in Venezuela, Argentina, and here in Brazil. And uh, they thought that it was a burgeoning market at that time and that eventually could prove useful. Since the agreement gave Time Life, a foreign company, an interest in a Brazilian media company, it appeared to be contrary to Brazilian law. But it did give Mourinho a crucial edge. 
A Globo surgiu com financiamentos é, de um acordo feito entre o grupo Time Life. E esse, esse financiamento chegava a um ponto de que a estação, a emissora Globo, no Rio de Janeiro, a emissora, ela tinha uma montagem de recursos da ordem de 6 milhões de dólares, enquanto que a melhor estação de televisão da, do grupo da Tupi, que era a segunda maior rede na, na época, a melhor tinha sido montada com 300 mil dólares. TV Globo's first eight months had been a resounding flop, and Walter Clark, aged 29, was hired to direct the station. He was the architect of Globo's incredible success. Tem uma, um momento do, antes de assinar contrato na casa do Roberto, faz uma tapeçaria linda do Lussá, eu tremendo de medo, porque era uma jogada da vida, não tinha estrutura, não tinha estrutura de, de vivência de negócio para assumir aquilo, porque a Globo estava fadada a quebrar. Ela tinha quatro meses de vida, faturava na ordem, ela faturava 180 e gastava 700. Rio's disastrous floods in 1966 proved to be TV Globo's turning point. It covered the floods live. The other stations ignored the tragedy. When the second military president, Marshal Costa e Silva, took over in 1967, Brazil's short-lived economic miracle began. Uh, a country that at the same time that was getting into what was called at the time the industrialized world was leaving a large amount of its population, 60%, condemned to the situation, the, the economic and social situation of a country uh, situated in, in the eighth world. And that is the situation up to now. The regime's economic thinking was startlingly simple. The dictatorship gave priority to the development of a modern national telecommunication system, set up a ministry of communications, and made it possible to buy a TV set on credit. The stated objectives were, as ever, national security and integration. Como exemplo, todos os brasileiros poderão ver a Copa do Mundo pela TV e reciprocamente outros povos verão a maior festa popular do Brasil, o Carnaval Carioca. Era televisão e futebol, construir esse estádio de futebol e é, essa rede de, de telecomunicações impressionante no Brasil inteiro. E, ao mesmo tempo, uh, uh, houve uma degradação muito grande em termos de educação, de saúde. Tudo isso foi descuidado. By the end of the 60s, videotape and national networks had combined to destroy local program making. Production became centralized in Rio and Sao Paulo. The descent of Brazil's 60s youth culture did manage to find some space on television. Music festivals gained live coverage. The best were organized by TV Record in Sao Paulo. Resistance to the military dictatorship took to the streets in 1968. 100,000, mainly students, demonstrated in Rio. Nas escolas, nas ruas, campos, construções, caminhando e cantando e seguindo a canção. Após ter ouvido os membros do Conselho... Faced with this increasing opposition, the military regime took total dictatorial powers late in 1968 with its infamous Institutional Act No. 5. The parliament was shut. 
torture became routine. Prior censorship of the mass media was established. Soon after, it became a crime to break a law passed in secret. Some of the left began an armed struggle. Their most spectacular success was the kidnapping of the US ambassador, forcing the government to release these political prisoners. Hijacks, bombings, kidnaps and robberies, whether by left or right, were normally not reported. Torture was never mentioned. Internal security became the military's prime concern. Right-wing death squads were in operation. Some turned their hands to bombing theatres, like this one which had been showing Chico Buarque's play Roda Viva, Life Goes On. <laughs> 